this Shabbos has the distinction of also being the seventh day of Pesach. And the seventh day of Pesach is a very significant moment in time for the Jewish people as we pause to recall what happened on that first seventh day of Pesach. It was on the seventh day of Pesach that the Jews experienced the great miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea. A miracle that was so profound that the Jews could not help but burst out in song. Oz Yashir Moshe B'nai Israel, then Moshe and the children of Israel sang this song of praise to the Almighty. But they're not the only ones who sang. Because right after this song, we are told that Miriam took the timbrel and left the women in song as well. But there was a difference between the two songs. Moshe's song with the men was 20 verses. Miriam's with the women was just one. Why? Well, no one knows for sure, but a medieval commentator, the Raul Bag, Rabbeinu Levi Ben Gerishin said that the women sang less because they didn't appreciate the miracle as much as the men did because the women were intellectually and spiritually inferior to the men. They just didn't appreciate how wondrous this act of God was. Only the men did. The Raubag here is true to form because in the beginning of his biblical commentary, he points out that the first woman was named Chava, and Chava comes from Aim Kol Chai, the mother of all the living. But Chai means not only the living, it means animals. That Chava was one step above the animals, but never reached the intellectual status of a man. I don't know how Mrs. Raubach felt about, felt about this, but I do know that in the 1800s, there was a great, great giant of Torah learning, the Chassam Sofer, who looked at this as completely different. He said that the reason why the women sang less was because they always see God's miracle. They're on such a high spiritual plane that every day they see the great wonders of, and miracles of God in this world. It's the men who only now were able to appreciate the wonders of God. And so they burst out in song, but women didn't have to sing too much because they feel it every single day. Well, there are a couple of lessons we can learn from this. One is when we speak about the perspective of Judaism on women, oftentimes we're not talking about the perspective of Judaism, but we're talking about the perspective of Jewish men. There are lots of Ralbags in this world who see Judaism's view of women as being inferior. There are lots of chassam sofers in this world who see women's role and understanding as being superior. And I will also point out that the original name given to women that the Raoul Bag focused on was Chava, Ein Kol Chai, Mother of the Living. That speaks of the woman as being the mother, that that's her role in life from Judaism's perspective. But we should take note of the fact that that first woman was given another name besides Chava. She was also known as Isha, which is the same as Ish. This is already a woman in her own right, with her own status, with her own ability to stand on her own two feet, 
no different than a man. The truth of the matter is, down through the ages, within the Jewish world, women primarily were recognized for being Chava, the mother, the sustainer of the family. But now we're living in a world where the woman is not just the mother, although that's so important, but she has the option of being the Isha, of playing her own equal role in society. Times have changed. We would be wise to do the same. Chag Sameach, Shabbat Shalom.